Hey guys, check it out. Here's my daily recap for May 22nd, 2020, where I go into detail about opening, closing, and managing my trades. Thanks for joining me today, and let's just jump right in and start with the opening trades. Here's GSX. It is a uh, tech edu company uh, I'm not quite sure what they do um, but we don't need to know what the the stock actually does to trade them right all right so this is uh, just an iron condor that I sold let's go back to the activities tab this is out till June 28 days to go till expiration received a 58 cent credit sold the 40 uh, 40 call and then I bought the 45 put so excuse me I sold the 45 call and then I bought the 45 call which makes it a five dollar wide call spread and then I sold the 17 and a half put and then I bought the 15 put which actually I just noticed that that is an error on my part I messed that trade up a little bit it should have been five dollars wide instead of 250 on the put side oh well no big deal I could have I, I wouldn't have gained as much credit um, or I, I, sorry, I probably would have made more credit if I had done that, but that's okay. We live, we learn. Let's jump on over to the risk profile. All right, as you can tell here, the downside or the red area is the loss area. It's bigger on the call side than it is on the put side. Um, oh, well, let's, let's actually clear out this big working order. Here's the actual order I have that, that I placed and was filled on today. So let's see, as you can see, here's the red flag. This is where the stock is trading, around 30, uh, 29.73 to be exact. Uh, at expiration, I can make $58, or at expiration, if the stock is way down here, I could lose um, 120, uh, excuse me, $192 on the put side. On the call side, I could lose $442. Now, why would anybody do that? Why would they uh, risk, um, you know, $400 or whatever uh, just to make 58? Well, you know, that's better than 10%. Um, uh, if you if you uh, hold it to expiration, 10% in 30 days. Um, you know, if you talk to uh, if you talk to a stock trader and not an options trader. Um, They'll, they'll tell you that you need to actually risk one to make two or three or something like that. Well, the reason why this is valuable to me and why it works out in my favor is because this is a 90% probability that I will actually make this $58. Now, to increase that probability even more, I actually manage at 20 days or, uh, you know, 20 days to expiration or at 50% profit. So, you know, around, you know, in eight days and next week, we'll see where we're at. Maybe there'll be so much extrinsic value loss that, uh, that I could actually take this off and, and buy it back for, um, for 50% of what I sold it to for. We'll see and I'll keep you up to date on that. But as it stands, that's why it's important um, for me at least to, to sell high probability trades uh, because I don't need to know which way the stock is going to go and I don't need to uh, risk one to make two or three or four or whatever the ratio happens to be. I'll actually take a high probability trade as opposed to a 50-50 trade because, you know, stock traders, they don't, they, you know, they'll, they'll draw lines on their chart. They'll dry, draw descending or ascending triangles or, uh, or pennants or flags or whatever um, and they'll say, well, you know, probability is that it'll go this way. Um, but, you know, that's not true. You never know which way the, the market is going to actually go. Nobody does. So I, I use this and I, uh, and, and this is why I like trading iron condors or options. Um, I usually stick around 80 to 90% probability of profit. All right. That was kind of a little sidetrack uh, education for you, but Let's jump back into it and go to the next opening trade today, which was Twitter. All right, so same thing here. I sold an iron condor, 
high probability around 90 percent um, 35 cent credit is what I received for <clears throat> excuse me is what I received for this it, it happens to be a two dollar wide uh, iron condor actually so let's go to the curve uh, the risk profile and I don't know why I didn't switch over to Twitter let's go here Twitter all right so as you can see uh, here in this little box up here profit at expiration is 35 um, and then also down here the risk is 165 and again it's a high probability around 90 percent uh, probability of profit of, and then of course to, to increase that again I'll manage that 50 percent or around 20 21 days left to go in the the cycle all right, switching gears, let's jump into the closing trades. Uh, a couple winning trades for me. Um, this is EEM, it's an emerging market ETF. I put this on uh, about a month ago on April 24th at 12.30 p.m. Actually, that, that just reminded me of something. Now, let's say you have a full-time job uh, and you can't trade during the day. Well, that's fine. I, I don't trade during the day. I, I trade uh, around 7.30, around 7.45, somewhere in there uh, because I'm mountain time and at 7.30 in the morning, that's 9.30 Eastern uh, and that's when the market opens. So I can put on this trade and I could have it working all day for me until it actually fills. So I'll put this in in the morning and then have it work and then if it gets filled throughout the day, that's great, that's what happened. And so in this case, it actually got filled at 12.30 p.m. I wasn't in front of my trading desk. It just, uh, I, I put it in there and I told the broker, hey, this is the price that I wanna get. These are the, the strikes, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, you know, once somebody was able to, uh, to buy this from me on the other side, uh, the broker filled it and that's, the, that's that. It's a done deal. Uh, so I, I didn't need my point is is that you don't need to be in front of your computer all the time uh, trading and today uh, so today I actually took that off I felt that because I was in this thing for almost a month that I didn't need to, uh, to to hold on to it any longer I'll just take my profit so what I did remember I got 38 38 cent credit on the 24th of April today's May 22nd closed it out uh, at uh, for 25 cents so it cost me 25 cents uh, to close that out what that means is that I made that difference so 38 minus 25 is 13 cents and that's per contract I sold two of these iron condors and uh, if you if you listen to one of my podcasts uh, a while ago I'm guessing it was uh, about a month ago I, I talked about this EEM trade and I remember specifically because they have these weird strike prices uh, 31, 73, 32, 73, et cetera. Um, normally it's at the dollar mark or the 50 cent mark or something like that. Um, but uh, anyway, so I just thought that was, that was interesting. And that, was, that was always strange to me. But as you can see, it was a dollar wide on the put side and a dollar wide on the call side. And let's take a quick look at the, actually I'll have to, create a similar order because it's closed and there was nothing there all right so that's what it looks like a very simple very easy iron condor it's it has stayed in between here for a month can you believe that from 35 to 37 bouncing back and forth actually we can probably look at the chart right here um, April 24th was right there and it has it's bounced from 35 up to 38 back and forth back and forth that's exactly what we want to see when we have an iron condor it's just the market going back and forth going sideways basically um, now of course uh, a, a management technique if you want to take us a minute and learn that is simply if let's say that uh, uh, that the stock price uh, went down to 33 32 and a half or even 32 it doesn't really matter what I would have done is I would have actually closed out the call spread and I actually and I would have rolled it down or essentially closed this out and open a new call spread around the 33 mark what that would do 
is that would give me more value and more credit, I mean. Uh, and so I would have reduced my overall risk in this trade. Now, you only do that if you're tested on, on one of the sides. So in this case, in, in this little example here, we were tested on the downside, on the put side, and which means it's in the red. It means we are, we're losing this trade. And since it's a loser, we want to do whatever we can to reduce our risk or reduce our loss, right? And so that's one technique is you could roll this down um, to make it uh, what they call an iron fly. Uh, you just roll down the, the call side to a different strike price and you get more credit and basically reducing your risk, reducing your losses. All right, so that's EEM. Let's jump into IWM. Uh, this was another one that I had closed and let's get rid of that. That was just a, a working sample order. Um, um, let's go here. Where is it at? Why is it not populating? I W M. Okay. All right. So this one I put on uh, May uh, May eleventh again at one o eight p.m. This was one that I had started early in the morning around seven forty five or so. I just had it working all day and it finally filled at one o eight on May eleventh. Uh, I sold it for a dollar forty eight. It's a five dollar wide uh, iron condor. Uh, June uh, the expiration is June nineteenth, so twenty eight days to go till that time but uh, what I ended up doing was um, again I felt that it was uh, in my in my favor to go ahead and close this out so since I received a dollar 48 I paid a dollar 14 uh, to close it so you take that difference whatever that happens to be uh, I'm not that great at math but I guess we can take the calculator Let's see 148 minus 114 I think I added that or something. Let's do that again. 148 minus 114. 34 cents. And that's per contract. And then, of course, if you multiply that by 100, because each contract is worth 100 shares, right? Uh, $34 is what I made per contract on this uh, IWM trade. I was in it for about two weeks. So pretty cool. The original, let's see, let's take a look at the actual risk originally. Um, it was $352 and uh, the max profit, if I held this to expiration and it expired anywhere in this green, the stock price, ex uh, and the stock price was right here in between this, anywhere in this green area at expiration, I would have made $148 or so. Okay, and that's about it. I believe that's all we have for you today. I want to thank you for watching and listening. Hey, if you're listening on the podcast, make sure you head over to my YouTube channel so you can get a visual of what I'm talking about on each of these episodes. Now, if you're on YouTube, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and to share it. Uh, because this actually helps me and it lets me know that you want more of my content and it encourages me to spend more time making these videos. It also helps the YouTube algorithm to know that what we're doing over here is valuable. Alright guys, I love you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And I'll see you next time. Peace.